director of energy footwear for Converse. And um, I have the distinct pleasure of working with both uh, Samuel and Virgil. So um, without any further ado, London's very own Sam, please join us. Yes, what's good? What are you saying, Jim? Well, I'm good thanks to see you. Thanks and, for having uh, me here, man. Looking forward to contributing, you know? Let's do it. Let's do it. And last but, but never not least, uh, Chicago's very own Virgil. Please join us. Hey, hey, what's good, fellas? It's what's good, good to link up. Good. Yep. Yes, yes. So, uh, again, good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, we're here to talk about uh, mentoring through creativity, right? And so I want to start um, right with you guys specific as, as creative. So you two have skill sets across multiple disciplines. I would consider you both the, the unicorns in the game, so to speak, uh, Swiss army knives kind of sort. <laughs> so what role do you believe creativity plays in solving problems across all disciplines? Sam, you can go first. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that the notion of creativity across all disciplines is just super, super important, man. And it's like a key skill that you kind of um, have to hone. Creativity needs to be there on demand. And I think both Virgil and I have kind of built this skill set through repetition and kind of throwing ourselves at problem solving across all different formats, which kind of allow us to never really stop being creative. It's more like a mindset you have to keep that you just apply to different tasks. Yeah, exactly. You know, Sam explained it perfectly. You know, if we were born maybe in a different era where like succinct disciplines were sort of like glorified, like, hey, you do typesetting <laughs> or hey, you do pattern making or hey, you do architecture and you never do what you do. <laughs> you know, you kind of stay in your silo. I think where Samuel and I have like harnessed the sort of black creativity and, you know, expressionism within like a modernism aesthetic is we, we simply just remove the lines between all disciplines. And then we actually operate like, as he's saying, like a tier above. If you keep that repetition of like on demand problem solving, then you realize you don't know if you're painting or if you're doing a graphic or if you're doing a pattern, you're sort of in your own vocabulary. And then you're sort of just putting it in different outlets. I love that. And I, and I love that um, how you guys both articulated. And what we're doing here now is, you know, this is being communicated as a practice, you know? So that's, that's super impactful for, for me and I'm sure the users. And now, Sam, you talked about uh, honing in your skills and, 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 you know, before you guys fully hone your skill sets, I would have to imagine that mentorship and networking played a, a pivotal part in that. And we know today cultivating mentorship and networking opportunities is like an art. So I would ask what role did creativity play in helping you guys put yourself in position for these type of opportunities? It's definitely, you know, creativity is the first catalyst and it's taking that spirit you have for creativity and then applying it, to be honest, you've got to go and apply it to education. Once you've got the education down, you've got the hard skills down, at that point, you're completely refutable because the combat sport we play, Virgin and I play a combat sport. Yeah, exactly. It's high, contact. It's, it's high contact, it's high intensity and you have to have the creativity is almost like the catalyst, but then the skill set is the education. So the creativity goes into the education, the two mix. And at that point, you're then ready to kind of go into industry and start looking for mentorship. So when I first reached out to Virgil, which I'm starting to feel old now, V, that was like nine years ago. almost. A I know, it's crazy. <laughs> Time goes quick. Time goes quick. But when I yeah. first reached out, I already had like a first class degree had won a couple, you know, of like um, local or, design awards and I was working in the industry. So you've got to be ready to reach out to, to people you look up to and to your mentors to be prepared to then take on the work, but also be deemed as viable or already by a mentor. Yeah, we were just like, I always like when we do these talks, like that people listening, get the jewels out of it, not just to hear us tell our stories. And man, Sam, I wish you had your Instagram still. Do you have like screen grabs of your website? From it was like all down. yellow. You remember yeah, it was like all yellow. yellow. Man, and like, you know, still my same practices today. Not only like as Sam was saying, it's like 
there was a logic and thinking and then there was an aesthetic you know i did eight years of school not knowing exactly what i wanted to do but and i'm a i'm a like an advocator of education but also you know from the format of knowing which rules to break mm. you know what i mean often at times education seems like something you have to do or the sort of boring part it's so easy to exist without it but where we both combined before we got to mentorship, as he's saying, it was like we came with a skill set of learned things and then we came with a set of things that were false in that or things we wanted to investigate or things that we believed in, you know, different practices. And then, you know, through his Instagram, it was like we both, you know, I, I don't even consider myself a mentor <laughs> in a way. It's like we were both on a path. And you know, as you can see in our work, it's like, hey, let's investigate these ideas that we have outside of, uh, of any creative disciplines on the journey together. So you can almost replace the word mentorship with the new age format of like, let's explore in the same sort of unbound territory. Yeah, you guys bring up uh, both great, great points. And when you talk about um, that that, that skill set and, and, and knowing what tools to, to, to bring to the work site, so to speak, you have to already be prepared um, with that toolbox and referencing how you guys got in connection with one another. Virgil, you specifically, uh, you talk about the, the six images that you saw from, from yeah. Sam, you know, and that, that was to me, that's a, that's a tool in his box that enabled you to, to kind of have um, a shared vision and a shared journey together. Yeah, you know, like the idea of a resume or CV <laughs> or, you know, like I remember there was sound design on, yeah. that, on that Instagram. There was there was uh, like a visual identity. And it was like, you know, nine years ago when I was like solo with the same with the same laptop, it was like, how can we form community? And I think that that's the important sort of segue is like, you know, young black kids with curiosity that wanted to exist in spaces of fashion and art. Like that wasn't gonna happen in just me and my laptop. Mm -hmm. You know, that's gonna have to build bridges and the conversation is shorter when we both know the same struggles that we have and sort of being respected once we apply, get in the door. Sam, what do you think on that? Yeah, I mean, you make perfect sense on that. And I think we really understood that to see change, you have to have a movement, you have to have a group and body of people who are kind of articulating their own perspectives, but under like a wider umbrella of what's happening culturally. And I think that's what we kind of were able to pick up off one another. As Virgil said, this early spirit we've always had of working on like a ring to a shoe to like, you know, a large scale soft installation. We've always been doing that. And it's also about making sure that being able to communicate in these different formats means you can reach as many people as possible. Because really what we're trying to do here through the work we produce is actually identify other like-minded individuals who can help grow this cultural movement which is happening within design. So as much as it is about mentorship, it's also really about partnership and community and kind of finding and founding an age of design to come forward. Yes. Yeah, and just to tack on to that, like, you know, obviously we're in a year that's 2020, where, where we're able to look in the mirror at all these injustices and all these like, you know, positioning that certain segments of the group and, you know, like Sam and I've, you know, this is 10 years ago <laughs> that, you know, we had blind faith in this direction that black creativity could be respected and put, put on the pedestal that it deserves. And, you know, from his fashion, I went to a fashion show of his in London maybe three years ago that was complete theater you know it was devoid of of what we know of as a runway show and you know even looking at my last show of uh Louis Vuitton this idea of like just pure young black creativity and systems that largely don't have voices for us is why you know we're thankful for this platform but we're thankful to be able to get up every day and like we said, exist outside bounds of creativity. And that's the beauty of it. When you quickly realize that there is a system and your way of approaching problems may not necessarily work with that system, you have so much capacity to build outside, around, underneath and above and through <laughs> the system. And I think that's the dynamism you're seeing in Virgil's shows 
which he's been doing for a long time now, but specifically with the latest Louis Vuitton shows, they're indescribable. You can't just say that as a fashion show. It's much more than that. It's this multifaceted experience. And I'd say to, you know, um, individuals who are watching this and listening, there is no limit to what you can apply your intuition and ideas to. And we were able to build our careers gradually over time by having a much more limitless approach. It was more so about expressing and exploration, you know, and that's what's really led us um, forward. Exactly. I know Jimmy's got mad questions, but Sam and I can do this no, all day. But I do want to highlight, I want to highlight before we get too far gone, like the, because it's obvious, right? You know, like we're both, we both are articulate and we love like explaining our point, but I want to, I want to take a, you know, in that lineage, like what Sam said about you knowing the system, but realizing once you break that barrier, there's more space, there's more freedom above, below. And I think his last show, or one of the most recent shows in Milan, where he literally like elevated the brand from the space that it, it is experimental to begin with, but mm -hmm. literally like just put it on the box, you know, the green box, above it, even down to the images for the latest Converse campaign with Bafik, you know, that's outside of the sphere of a sphere of, of any canon, you know, that existed to say, hey, you know, the lineage actually can go up and over. It doesn't have to be a smooth line yeah. of evolution. I think is important, you know, I just wanted to highlight that because what we're doing is we're laying the new vocabulary for a black aesthetic you know, and creative experience. No, no, no doubt. And, and honestly, while you guys are just sitting here talking, I'm thinking the same thing, like, man, how, how, how rare of an opportunity for us to all be here together and me specifically speaking with you guys and, you know, each with our, with our megaphones in our hands and blasting this message out to, to people all across the world. So it's just a testament to everything you guys are saying. And, you know, for, for some of us and most of us, I would say our communities uh, were and are our first natural mentors, right? And, and today we see you both very active in your communities, specifically the past few months. And so, you know, why, why do you guys feel that that's important now more than ever? Well, I feel like it's, I think there's two sides to it, right? I think the one side is that when you're a black creative, you kind of are so fixed on building a black movement. And I think that to the start of our movement, we wanted a lot of that to be about making sure that behind the scenes in terms of articulating and making the end products and the creative side of like photography and music and installation, that there were black people in those spaces first. So our main focus, you could say, was building black teams. I'd say now that there's been such a, a renaissance moment in the next civil rights moment that we're in now, the focus goes back to now pushing all of that commitment onto the front end of the community and making sure that the next generation and the immediate generations, millennials and Gen Z have resources they need. So we're always playing this, this game of pivoting between people who are already working within the industry and making sure that we're supporting our brothers and sisters in that space. And at the same time, now we're playing a game of bringing people who maybe want to be in the industry in the next few years or different industries, opportunity and accessibility. But I say the biggest change that's probably happened is that for myself, and I'm sure for you as well, the view of helping our fellow creatives has now expanded. The word creative isn't as linear as it would have been before. Creative to me is like a black farmer in Scotland who's trying to start a vegan movement. Or creative to me is, you know, again, like a black barbershop in Manchester who also is trying to put new ideas forward. So I think that this idea of creativity and mentorship and helping one another has only expanded um, due to what's happened this year and what is happening now. Yeah, you know, quite essentially what Sam said is, you know, we're on a 10 year journey of doing the behind the scenes work, you know, like, and you could almost feel it. Anything that's reactionary to the moment, like, hey, just push, push an image of, of this diverse sort of teams. You know, it takes a lot of late nights, <laughs> you know, it takes a lot of, of thinking, building, you know, like when Sam and I started, we were in a little gallery in Paris 
nine years ago, putting man trying to figure out how to put mannequins together to do a presentation. Yeah. And like, you can't discredit the countless hours of community building and finding ourselves. I think that's what's unique about Sam and I's relationship. It was almost something that we couldn't learn in school, no. right? You can't learn from your professor who doesn't have the same skin tone as you. Because when you walk out and we would show our resume to a gallery or an architecture office or design office, we were often just looked at like, hey, you're the outlier. You know, I don't exactly understand what you hope to get here. <laughs> you know, so then we built our career outside that. And now that we're amongst this new civil rights movement, you know, I think we're approaching it with optimism. You see Samuel's launching his design support program, you yeah. know, for creatives outside of that. You know, it, while we're building our own career, you know, like we're not 30 years in the game, but you see that when I see his work, it's embedded in the whole overarching project. Mm -hmm. When you see me and my postmodern scholarship fund, it was like, it's called postmodern because I was honestly skeptical of any, anyone that came before me that was doing an educational sort of support for black students. I have to be there one by one, making sure that each dollar is articulated to the right, you know, I'm accountable. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have to go with that, with the same sort of um, specificity as we do is picking fabrics, is hiring uh, human resource, you know, picking our, building our teams and, you know, it, it's a part of the work. And I think what Sam highlighted is like, there's work in front of the screen and then there's 10 times the amount of work behind the screen year in, year out, um, that we're proud of. I think it's it's great when you give us a platform to speak on it because you know we're held to such a standard that most people haven't sort of listened. Yeah, and just, just to add to that note, you know, the work isn't just about the the products we put forth, which are really amazing. We get to work with amazing partners like, like yourself, Jimmy. But it, as you rightly know, it's also about really our goal here is to create a whole new era of black creativity and black excellence and black economics. And we're just as um, impassioned about design and creativity as we are about the overall um, well-being of people of color in the 21st century. And it's a massive goal, but then this is the whole point, right? The goals need to be set here to induce that level of change. Yes, indeed. And I, I, I want to make sure that people actually understand um, you know, heavy, heavy is the head that wears the crown. And so there's a responsibility on both ends. And I, I would like to imagine that somewhere in this virtual crowd, um, we, we, we have the next Sam Ross, we have the next Virgil Abloh. And so if you guys could just speak a little bit to uh, what that relationship is like, right? How is it reciprocal and, and, and what people want, uh, what, what people need to be ready to do and what they should be prepared to come with when they're hoping one day to, to be in a room with you guys? I think, you know, such a great question. I'm sure we, Sam gets asked that all the time. And I think it's, you know, I, I once did this thing with Hans Ulrich, a curator that we're both close with, and he asked me for a do it project, like it's kind of like a step by step program and mine, it's just still on his Instagram, it said how to pickpocket the establishment, <laughs> you know, and I put that out in January or something like that, you know, it's just me freestyling trying to catch a vibe, you know, in a short, but it's really, I think what every generation, you know, how youth always like will always win. You have to embrace youth culture and this idea that you will take the establishment and improve it for the better. But you almost have to come into it like with a roll up your sleeves and, and really foster that in a respectful way. I think when you look at Sam and I's success and our privilege to be able to create, we respect the, we, we respect the, the past so much that we learned it, you know, that we apply it that we circumvent it, but there's a mutual respect for it. And I would say to any young kid listening that will soon take over, maybe not soon for Sam, I'm a bit older, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> occupy these positions. The one thing you have to, you know, Sam said it, we're in a new civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. We're actually looking to build community. You know, I think what 
we're at that bridge of the generation where it's an essential way, like my mentors weren't usually looking to sort of do a zoom <laughs> in this capacity, you know? And for me, I always say that the story arc is Sam and I's story keeps going, but also it keeps building with a side with Tremaine, yes. with our community. When we all sit at the table and we all intellectualize street culture, you know, design, I think you're seeing a, a new version of the civil rights movement that incorporates creativity and design. And now that's something like Sam said, it's like a lofty goal, but that's something we can show to our forefathers. Like, Hey, you know, we removed, you know, we, we came together and now we have a community, but mm -hmm. Sam, what do you think of it? Yeah. I think that, that the next generation who take, you know, the mantle, um, and we'll really spearhead things beyond what Virgin and I will do and continue to push the notion of art movement and design collective is going to be so seminal. And, and again, looking at how the fact that design has always been political, fashion has always been political, but now it's yeah. hyper political and we have a level playing field. And I say we, because we're still part of that community, right? The fact that we can utilize social media and like a digital existence to jump across different locations um, with such speed and keep tight communities is really a vantage point. I can give an example to, I remember the first time I wanted to really try and push to build a relationship with Vogue. It was probably too early and they said no to me because the brand didn't have enough buzz at the time. So the next day or two days later, we set up a flood pop-up store in London and we had 750 people turn up and we gave out all of the clothes for free. And then we got onto Vogue wow. because it was about <laughs> the social movement and the energy of the community and of the crowd and the stimuli that was happening. The product is almost like the part of the message, but it's more so about the people and community. So the next generation coming forth is all about developing a tight knit community and you all spearheading what you believe in forward. And that's how you build traction and momentum. And then when you do that, you'll start meeting other people who have their own communities building and their own, uh, you know, patches of momentum. And then you build together. It's all about community. It's not about the individual. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I like think, the, um, go ahead. Marcia. No, just to highlight, like just a little jewel for the, for the listeners that will take the torch. It's like that first no is so valuable because it tells you which direction to go, mm -hmm. you know, like in his story about so many, of us, you know, I don't want young people to get discouraged by what they don't have access to or what they don't have the resources to do. As Sam just explained in that short story, it's like that first no, that's where the pickpocket, pickpocket the establishment comes in. Like that tells you how to turn 10 degrees and get look at where he's at. <laughs> you know, if he wouldn't have digested that information and turned it back on itself, you know, we might not be here, but that was never in question. But not to cut you off. No, no. One more point. One more point. Just slide in. Just slide in, Jimmy, real quick. <laughs> it's, it's not about, to the young listeners, it's not about perfection. It's almost about the velocity and the energy and the consistency and the pace. Because you will learn as you go. Like, we both started off on champion, dying champion. Yeah. And now... Wait we now have to run like a supply chain in Atelier, but it's about the process and that velocity needs to keep hitting. You can't stop, you know, you have to keep going. Yeah. And I was at that pop-up shop. I'm in the field, <laughs> you know, it was an amazing experience, like not to get off on a tangent, but you know, in the fashion community, we always glorify the things that were happening in a different generation, you know, that were on everyone's Tumblr pages and on everyone's archive Instagram. Like we have to remember that we have that history too. You know, mm -hmm. that's just a word of the wise to the black community and creatives. It's like, I'll go off in a wild tangent. So I'll save that for like another week. <laughs> so, you know what, uh, fellas, you, you, you guys have, have done such an amazing job and, 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 and making my, my role here super easy. You have literally, um, over answered every single question that I could have thought of. <laughs> so to, to, to not be selfish, 
Uh, how you guys feel about bringing in some community members in the virtual crowd to ask a few questions? Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Uh, Agatha from Italy, you want to join us? Yeah. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Hi. Oh, I'm so glad to be here. Uh, my name is Agatha. I'm 25 years old and I'm a sneaker designer based in, in Italy. And my question for you, Virgil and Sam, is um, being a mentor means uh, also sharing and collaborating. Um, many creatives in our society are jealous of their ideas. They are especially in, in the workplace. So how should school teach to young people this sense of sharing and collaboration? I think that I think that it's really good that you've got the you know the reality of being a footwear designer because it's so important for the next generation coming up to understand that to articulate or build any type of product, whether it be sculpture, whether it be a piece of footwear, whether it be a jacket, whether it be a shed, it takes more than one person to do so. <laughs> so this like idea a work of team. Exactly that. Like the idea of like soul independence doesn't exist. It's always about the plural and it's always about every individual involved. So it's more so for me, I think that it'd be great to see the younger generation have a bit more visibility on how design process works in practice, in uh, commercial circumstances. And I think that's something Virgil and I can kind of start to share across, uh, you know, as time goes on on social media and whatnot, so people can see and understand how that process works. Yeah, and you, you raise a good point. Like, since <laughs> this is something that I've like delved a lot into is like the logic. And Sam mentioned like art movement. Like once our generation realizes that we are adding a new movement, you know, we have this now, we have a phone <laughs> that obliterates a whole library of research. So we're coming up on a sphere where there's going to be a new name for how we work. There's a new name for ego. There's a new name for, it's not like Da Vinci, like Sam is saying, like Bernini, like uh, my name is on it. I was the only person to touch this stone. <laughs> and create that or paint the Sistine Chapel was done by one person for the whole time. Like there's these myths or, you know, they're not like, you know, the negative side, there's this idea of creation with someone's name on it that has educated a whole new generation that you're only valid if you were this sort of sole creator, right? And uh, as you say, in a, in a realistic sense, if you go to an art studio, if you go to, like a production, making a Converse shoe, you know, it would be, it's a different experience to make those things than might be projected. And where I, what I like about our generation is like, you know, someone I heard yesterday was calling like the truth seekers, you know, that's happening across all spheres. And I think our design community and our generation and our lineage get more esteemed and they get more reality we, we start entering our new age once we make it an environment where collaboration is okay you know where influences come in and out you know okay thank you so much for your reply anytime thank you so next bye. up uh bye bye see you all right we we have ming from thailand would you like to join us ming Okay, uh, hi guys. Hey, Ming. Uh, so my name is Gokgit Titi Tanawat. I am a photography student from Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, let's get right to the questions. So as many of us know that you both shape all aspects of the runway shows outside of just the designs themselves. For me, I think the runway shows really, really do play a big part of representing the brands so can you guys talk about the process of how you approach the creation of a show? You go, Sam. I know you got some crazy ideas coming up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that the process of a runway show is this really um, special uh, and sacred space where you can have a lot more of a um, like a fluid dynamic of what you want to communicate, right? Because on one side, the crux of it is, of course, making sure that you're sharing exceptional garments. But on the second side, there's this massive window and room to have like a social 
uh, conversation with the world at a single point. And on the third side, it also offers you the opportunity to almost reset your philosophy on a six month basis. So for myself, it's really interesting to always play between those dynamics on like, on like a concurrent calendar. But the main thing it allows you to do is immediately impact the, like the, wider, um, the wider zeitgeist within fashion. And um, this idea of installation in runway shows is, is seminal to that. To not get too heady into it, because I could talk about this for a very, <laughs> very um, long time. But again, if, if we know human form structure, that was really about capturing the spirit of um, tearing down structures in a very performative way. And for, for, again, for like Virgin, Virgin Lie, where we kind of come from outside of fashion in more the design discipline, it's really important for us to have this level of like semantic and semiotics at, at play outside of just showing clothes. Yeah, even just piggybacking off what Sam's saying, it's like when we started, started in fashion, shows were like, it was like a prescribed way to sort of adopt into the industry. You know, and we we did that in order to learn the language yet again. But I think now, you know, that was very surface level. It's almost like a, an assembly line. Like each brand, you get one hour, put your clothes on the assembly line and be judged evenly. And I think where we've expanded and obliterated that, for me and Sam, I see in his work, it's like the show is now in a 30 minute opportunity to go inside our brain. Mm -hmm not look at what we're serving on the surface level, which is like a whole new abyss of possibilities. Like any new future off-white or Louis Vuitton show, you know, by prerequisite is to allow someone to dive into the inspiration that I've worked on for six months, not just simply look at the surface area of the clothes. And, you know, we're finding a new storytelling capability in that. Right. Uh, okay, so it's been such an honor to get to talk to you guys. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And so, uh, gentlemen, let's let's take uh, one more question from our All Star community here at Converse. So, uh, Gobs from South Africa, please join us. Hi, everyone. Hey, good. Oh, what's good? I like your hat. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, my name is Godzo Lamini, well known as The Guide, and I'm a wardrobe slash fashion stylist from Johannesburg, South Africa, and I'm 20 years old. Um, my question to you guys is, as a South African creative, as a Black creative in South Africa, I often find it difficult how one can turn like an idea into profit and or how one can take a local idea or brand to like an international level noting the difficulties of funding and like the state of the economy in South Africa. Do you guys have any adv advice on where one could start? Sam, you can start. Yeah, I think that this is a really, really um, concise and strong question. And the easiest way to start up, to turn an idea into profit is to first identify what's missing in the marketplace. And I guess this is where we kind of switch from, you know, right brain creativity into like the business dynamics of fashion and communication, which is super important. You first need to identify what's missing within, you know, your local geography um, in terms of product or in terms of fashion communication, and then look at what means you have that are viable to start communicating a service and providing a service. I mean, a really simple example I can give is when I started a cold war, I started from ground up. So I kind of took the money I had and ended up buying stock garments and then re-dyeing those blank t-shirts and printing and, and fusing tape and cutting and stitching and painting to add a point of difference to a product at a, uh, from a perspective which wouldn't potentially indebt me. And then when I started to sell these products, I didn't produce a lot of inventory. It was on like a sell-by-sell a, a sell basis. So I was always in control of the cash flow. I was never at risk of overselling and not being able to deliver. And I was never in a place where, you know, the idea became too cumbersome. It's always about litmus testing, 
A-B testing to see how things can gradually grow. And also it's about, it's okay to start at grassroots. Grassroots is really good. And this is something that, you know, one of our close friends always talks about, Hiroshi Fujiwara, always talks about the fact that it's good to start at a grassroots level. It gives you time. It gives you time to make mistakes. It gives you time to learn. It gives you time to start building a bit more uh, cash flow to then progress your ideas. So setting a timeline and starting at grassroots level is the safest and in my opinion, the most optimized way to kind of safeguard your success. Yeah. And, you know, Sam highlighted a very important thing. It's like, it's like when everyone's going right, go a little bit left. You know, that's the shorthand way of like, if all of your friends are making t-shirt brands, make a hat brand. I guarantee you, now you're already on it. I guarantee you, if you make those, if you, if you keep making those hats, right, or do your own twist, immediately yeah. using this tool of social media, which leveled the playing field, you know, now you have an idea of like impacting um, with your, with your own ingenuity. And then, you know, when I met Sam, he was going to the local manufacture like factory in the UK with just garment like bags of garments and dyeing yeah. and painting and what I love about that story is because you know I'm about empowering us as black creatives I'm like if you don't have the means how do you persevere you know if you don't have the like you said something very practical I don't want to like gloss over or, or look at it with privilege if you don't have the means or resources or funds like listening to Sam's story, he literally went and got a, some paint, which is zero, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and edited a garment. And it was like, this garment is perfect in an ecosystem. And that's very different than like, oh, I need to go to this factory in Italy to make this jacket with this Cobrax button, because that's my idea. And if I don't have that Cobrax button, which costs like 20 bucks, then the idea doesn't launch. And I think that our ingenuity as black creatives, our ability, you know, I can already tell you're stylish. I can tell by your name. <laughs> I can tell by your hat that you are equitable and you're, and you're pushing your culture forward. You know, it, it, it's a little bit of a conundrum, but once you figure out what makes you a little bit left compared to your industry that's right, the ideas will start catching, you know, and the influence will start are going. And so it might not be predictable, but it's that thinking on your feet and perseverance that makes the difference. It's not always a practical uh, hindrance. Thank you guys very much. No worries. Thank you. Major, major thank you to all of our Converse All-Stars out there. Those were great questions. And I hope you guys found some, some really strong value in it um, because I did. And, and, and before we get out of here, um, I'd be remiss if I just didn't thank you, you guys both um, for what you do on a day-to-day -day basis and, and how you showed up here today. Um, and so it's a, it's a privilege to, to be able to moderate this with you guys. It's a privilege to create with you guys. Um, really looking forward to, to Sam's most, most recent launch that's, that's about to pop on any day. And Virgil, we got some more work to do too. So um, I'll see you guys later. Cool. Appreciate Peace. it, guys. Thank you.